ever wondered what a DOS attack is? Well, let's unravel this cyber mystery together. DOS, or denial of service, is a malicious attempt to disrupt the normal functioning of a network, service, or server. Imagine a highway bustling with traffic. Now imagine if an influx of cars, far beyond its capacity, floods this highway. Chaos ensues, right? That's exactly what happens in a DOS attack. The perpetrator overwhelms the system with an excess of data traffic, rendering it inaccessible to its intended users. By doing this, they effectively deny the service of that system to its legitimate users. It's like a digital traffic jam, causing disruption and potentially serious damage. Now you might be thinking, isn't that the same as a DDoS attack? Well, not quite. So what separates a DOS attack from a DDoS attack? Let's break it down. A denial of service or DOS attack is when one system targets another to overwhelm it and disrupt its normal functioning. Picture a single person throwing a barrage of tennis balls at a target. Now imagine a distributed denial of service or DDoS attack. This is not just one person but a whole crowd, each throwing those tennis balls at the same target. In this scenario, the target system is flooded with traffic from many different sources, making it much more challenging to defend against. This is the essence of a DDoS attack, multiple systems coordinated to target and overwhelm a single system. While the fundamental objective of both attacks is disruption of service, the scale, intensity, and difficulty in mitigating these attacks differ significantly. That's the primary difference, but there's more to these attacks than just their names. There's a whole range of DOS and DDoS attacks out there. Let's dive into the different types, starting with the ping of death. This is an attack that manipulates IP protocols by sending malicious pings to a system, causing it to freeze or crash. Next, we have the SYN flood. This type of attack exploits a vulnerability in the TCP connection sequence, commonly known as the three-way handshake. The attacker sends numerous SN requests to a victim system, but intentionally does not respond to the system's SYN-ACK responses, overwhelming the system and rendering it unresponsive. Buffer overflow attacks are another type to be aware of. Here, the attacker sends more data than the buffer can handle, causing the excess data to overflow. This overflow can corrupt or overwrite valid data, or even execute malicious commands. Then we have slow loris. This sly attack aims to keep as many connections to the target web server open for as long as possible. It accomplishes this by continuously sending partial HTTP requests, eventually leading to the exhaustion of simultaneous connections, and consequently, a server outage. We also have what's called a teardrop attack. In this type, the attacker's goal is to disrupt the reassembly of data packets. They send mangled IP fragments with overlapping and oversized payloads to the target machine. The victim system tries to reconstruct these packets but ultimately fails, leading to a system crash. Flooding attack. Another common one overwhelms the victim's network with a deluge of packets, consuming bandwidth and resources until the system becomes inaccessible. The IP fragmentation attack is similar to the teardrop attack, but the attacker exploits the way the victim system handles fragmented IP packets. A volumetric attack, as the name suggests, involves the attacker overwhelming the victim's bandwidth with a high volume of data, rendering the network unusable. Protocol attacks consume all the processing capacity of the victim's system or network resources, while application-based attacks target the layer where web pages are generated on the server and delivered in response to HTTP requests. Understanding these attacks is the first step to preventing them. But why would someone launch a DOS or DDoS attack in the first place? Well, the motives behind these attacks are as varied as they are troubling. One of the most common reasons is competition. In the business world, for example, a company might employ these tactics to knock a rival's website offline, gaining a competitive edge. By flooding the competitor's server with traffic, potential customers are unable to access their website, leading to potential revenue loss. Revenge is another motive. Disgruntled employees, upset customers, or even jilted lovers have been known to use DOS and DDoS attacks as a form of digital retribution. The perpetrator's goal here is not monetary or competitive gain, but rather the satisfaction of seeing their target suffer. Then there are those who launch these attacks simply to cause chaos. These are often the work of so-called hacktivists, individuals or groups who use hacking as a form of protest or to make a political statement. By disrupting services, they draw attention to their cause, but the motives don't end there. Some attackers use DOS and DDoS attacks as a smokescreen to distract IT teams while they carry out other malicious activities. 
While the team is focused on getting the network back online, the attacker can quietly infiltrate the system, stealing sensitive data or installing malware. Finally, there are those who carry out these attacks simply for the thrill of it. Known as script kiddies, these are often young, novice hackers who use pre-written scripts or toolkits to launch attacks, reveling in the power they wield over their victims. Understanding these motives is not just an academic exercise, it's a crucial part of defending against these attacks. When we know why these attacks happen, we can better anticipate them and put measures in place to mitigate their impact. Knowing why these attacks happen can help us prepare for and prevent them. And that's exactly what we'll be looking at in our next segment, so stay tuned. So how can you protect your network from DOS and DDoS attacks? First, you want to maintain a robust network infrastructure. This involves designing your network with redundancy in mind. For instance, by having multiple internet connections and servers, you can ensure that if one part of your network is attacked, the rest can continue to operate smoothly. Secondly, you should establish clear security policies. This includes setting rules on what types of traffic are allowed into your network and how much traffic can come from a single source. You can also include policies on how to respond to an attack, such as who to contact and what actions to take. Regularly updating and patching your systems is another crucial step. Software updates often include patches for security vulnerabilities that could be exploited in a DOS or DDoS attack. Therefore, it's essential to keep all your systems, including operating systems, applications, and security software, up to date. Additionally, it's vital to have a system in place for detecting and mitigating attacks. This could involve using intrusion detection systems to identify unusual network traffic or employing rate limiting to control the amount of traffic a server accepts. If an attack is detected, you can then take steps to mitigate it, such as blocking traffic from the attacking IP addresses. Investing in a DDoS protection service can also be a good idea. These services can absorb the extra traffic during an attack preventing it from overwhelming your network. They can also help identify and block malicious traffic before it reaches your network. Lastly, remember that education is a powerful tool. Make sure your team understands the signs of a DOS or DDoS attack and how to respond. This can help you react quickly if an attack occurs, minimizing the potential damage. In conclusion, preventing DOS and DDoS attacks involves a combination of robust network design, clear security policies, regular system updates, and ongoing vigilance. It's about being proactive and taking steps to protect your network before an attack occurs. Remember, the best defense is a good offense. Let's wrap it up, shall we? We've journeyed into the complex world of denial of service or DOS attacks and distributed denial of service, known as DDoS attacks. Both are malicious attempts to disrupt the normal functioning of a network, service, or website, but they differ in their execution. A DOS attack originates from a single source, while a DDoS attack is launched from multiple connected devices, often forming what we call a botnet. We've explored the various types of these attacks, each with its unique modus operandi. From the ping of death or ICMP flood, which overwhelms a system with ICMP packets, to the SYN flood that exploits the handshake process of a TCP connection. Buffer overflow attacks, on the other hand, overload a system's memory with excessive data while Slow Loris holds connections open by sending partial HTTP requests. Teardrop attacks involve sending mangled IP fragments with overlapping oversized payloads to crash systems. Then there's the flooding attack, aiming to saturate bandwidth with bogus data, as well as the IP fragmentation attack, which splits malicious packets to evade detection. The volumetric attack overwhelms a network's bandwidth, while the protocol attack consumes actual server resources. Lastly, an application-based attack targets the layer where web pages are generated in response to HTTP requests. But why are these attacks carried out? A variety of motives exist, from competitive business tactics, revenge and activism, to simple thrill-seeking. Cybersecurity isn't just about defense. Understanding the attacker's mindset is a key part of the strategy. Fortunately, there are ways to guard against these attacks. Implementing security measures such as firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and traffic analysis solutions can help. Regular system updates, network segmentation, and creating a response plan are also crucial steps in protecting your network. Stay vigilant, stay informed, and you can keep your network safe from these attacks. Until next time, stay safe out there.